How's it going guys? It's Bernard here from Living to Learn. Uh, just home from work, so I just thought I'd shoot on, do a quick video. Uh, Kit has been talked about quite a bit lately on the channel uh, and on the community page. Kind of started just before the, it's always talked about as we know, but just before the last group camp. And people started putting up their loadouts, started putting up what they were carrying, the weight of what they were carrying. And, it started to become a real trend, everybody was putting up the weight of what they were carrying, trying to figure out why is mine heavier, why is mine lighter, that sort of thing. And um, it just seemed like a good time to go through my kit, just an easy video I could do in the evenings and some of you guys might be interested if you have any questions after this video, um, don't hesitate to write a comment under the video or get me on the YouTube page or the Facebook page but I was thinking about this and I kind of said I tried to record this video before and it ended up being the guts of an hour and it's just too long winded it's too much to go through uh, I don't want to just race through it and say here look this is a sleeping bag this is what it does you know I want to be able to talk about a little bit about why I'm carrying what I'm carrying and how it got to that point so um, I decided to break it down into sections uh, you know sleep systems shelter fire kits which I don't have cook kits uh, tools that sort of stuff so I just decided to this evening I'd start with something fairly easy um, and just talk the tools I carry on an, on a, an overnighter it wouldn't really change for an extended trip and talk about the cook kit that I use which uh, I, uh, you've probably seen on the community channel I've po posted it a few times now at this stage but yeah so I thought I'd uh, have a little run through talk about how we got to that point and um, hopefully it gives you guys some ideas and like as always if you have any feedback for me or ideas on how to improve my kit I'm, I'm all ears on here so uh, just set up and we get going. So I suppose we'll start with the good stuff. Um, so these are typically the tools I'll carry on uh, an overnight or an extended trip. Uh, they won't they won't change. Um, purely because I don't have any other tools. These are the ones that over time I've gotten to the point now where I think I, I I'm fairly happy with the way my setup. Um, I'm not a one tool option kind of guy. Although the horseman might sway my opinion a little bit, but uh, generally I stick to four inch belt blade, neck knife, folding saw, hatchet. Fairly standard actually to be honest. Um, I don't carry two belt knives, I just have um, a, new, a new little baby that I'm just going to give a glimpse of, I'm going to do a review separately so um, of both knives, I'm going to do a review so I'll, uh, I'll, I won't go into too much detail about them but uh, I, I'll show you them anyway so I suppose you start with the ubiquitous folding saw the back of Laplander what can you say about it really it's a uh, for the price and for its weight and for its size it's it's a hell of a saw. It does it does an awful lot when it's out camping with me. Um, I got originally a Sandvik one used off um, an Irish buy and sell website for for free when I was buying a strop like two three years ago off a, a tradesman in Waterford and uh, I hadn't had a folding saw before and I only realised just how bloody useful they are to have. So I think this is my second. This is my yet. Yeah, this was this is my first of the Baco Laplanders. The other one, the blade in it was dying to death. And if anybody's tried to replace the blades on them, they know that blades are around fifteen quid, and you can buy the saw new for twenty seven, twenty eight euros. So there's no point to just buy buy the saw new. But it's a it's a great little it's a great little tool. Um, it's not going to do the work of a bow saw or a uh, a silky gone boy or a larger folding saw but it will it will do it will do most work uh, especially for sp splitting kindling and things like this for cutting 
so that's a staple in my kit. It's always in there. It's somewhere thrown in the bag. Um, the hatchet. I have the Wetterlings Wilderness or Wildlife hatchet. It's the 106. It's Wetterlings answer to the Grants Forest Brooks Wildlife hatchet. Um, it's uh, I've become seriously emotionally attached to this. I absolutely love it. Um, I think it weighs 800, 900 grams. So it's under it's under a kilo anyway. But it's um, has the same head size head as their larger small forest equivalent, just on a, a shorter handle. So it packs a wallop, even though it's a small hatchet. You're not going to be taken down trees with it but the reality is the reason I chose a hatchet and the reason I stuck with a hatchet is because I'm not out shelter building that commonly I don't live in the boreal forest I live in an area where cutting down trees dead or alive full trees is not something I'm going to do regularly I need a, a, a camp a camp hatchet for for small tasks split and kindling uh, carving that sort of stuff so this has become my um, my go-to. I've had it for about 18 months, and yeah, I absolutely, absolutely love it. Slightly different head shape to the Grants Falls Wildlife. It's uh, more of a convex, whereas the Grants Falls is um, is is slightly more wedge shaped, and the Grants Falls will will bite a lot better. A lot better than the, the wildlife hatchet out of the box, so to speak. But it's uh, oh, the Grand Spurs will bite a lot better than the, the Wetterling, should I say, out of the box. But after a while, if you if you just give it a a, a, a lash of a stone, it um it'll bite pretty damn well. So yeah, this even I found myself lately because of group camps with living to learn. Uh, I have found that I'm not using it as much as I was before, but it's um. It's a staple in my pack, regardless. Um, I find that at the at the um, at the group camps or when myself and the other admins are out, I find that there's always somebody with a with a, a book saw or a, a tension saw or a, a horseman <laughs> that wants to clip limbs off or is just gonna split wood for me. So there's no need for me to pull it out a lot of the time anymore. But it goes in the pack anyway. Some way say it's unnecessary way. I I just won't leave the house without this thing. I I love it so. Um, that has been a staple for eighteen months. I can't fault it at all. It's actually a crying shame that Wetterlings have uh, closed down. So these things are going to get rare as hen's teeth as time goes on. So if you if you are looking for one, um, if you're looking for a Wetterlings in general, get them now. I think the the Stroud axe is um. Is virtually impossible to get at this point but um yeah a great little hatchet the uh, and it will it will compete on every front with the the wild the wildlife hatchet grants force so yeah it's a good alternative to it um neck knife uh, not a typical neck knife shape um and I I, I use this more of as a um, as a walkabout knife it's the Brock Claw. So you see a little dangler. So it looks more like a skinner in in its shape and in its profile. But um I think the Scandi's not really not really suited to skin skinning that, that well really to be honest with you. But um it's a great little blade. I um I use this blade commonly just when I'm out walking dogs or out walking with the dogs or if I'm out in a forest park where I know there's going to be people who are going to um, who are going to be pretty damn nervous about a guy carrying a four inch belt knife so I tend to carry this just under my jumper or my fleece or whatever and if I do see something that I need it for if I'm sitting down to have a cup of coffee I, um, I will flake out and I'll take this out it can do most of you're not going to batten with it but it can do pretty much all that a, a four inch blade can do just perhaps not as efficiently
but it's a great little knife to have. Um, Davey does uh, do a neck knife, you've probably seen it, it was actually a prize in the L12500 so I, I just decided not to go for the neck knife, I don't know why, um, I thought at the time that they were probably too close to what I was already carrying in terms of size and blade profile so it was basically the same knife only just a miniature version. I wanted something a little bit different, got this, my girlfriend got it for my birthday so I was absolutely delighted with it, I've had it for uh, almost 12 months now, um, as, well, as with my forest I've had it for 12 months as well and um, I, can't, I can't fault them at all, I think we all are familiar with, with Davies, Davies craftsmanship so yeah that's a staple in my main kit for overnighters but it's also a staple if I'm just out and about. I wouldn't call it an EDC because I don't EDC but I would say any time I'm out that's what I, if I'm out in any sort of woodland setting that's that's what I'll carry so it's a great great little knife. Um, my, mel my main belt knife up until recently has been this uh, a lot of you guys have probably seen it now at this point. It's the Brock Forest. Uh, it's walnut handle. Um, I f I, when I got this made by Davey, I got him to flare out the handle at the back a little bit. And it's, um, I'd say, a seriously comfortable handle. It's a 4 inch blade. I think it's 3mm thick. 3mm thick. Uh, Scandi grind. Uh, decorative pins and the whole shebang it's um yeah I can't fault this blade I have had one or two edge issues which have been exacerbated by the fact that I clipped staples on a piece of 2x4 and took absolute ribbons off the edge which Davy very kindly sorted out for me as you can see she's uh she cuts she cuts but um this is yeah, it's a beautiful knife. I've used it for a long time now. Over over 12 months, just over 12 months. I think I've one of the longest standing continuous Brock's Brock owners. So uh yeah, there's a there's a bit of um there's a bit of provenance to this. Yeah, it's a, it's a really really good knife. But it's kind of getting retired. I wouldn't say retired full time, she'll still be out with me, but uh, it's getting retired due to this, which I will go into more detail, I, I'll give my an in-depth review of uh, all three of these blades, but it's, in it, essentially this is the, I, w I don't know if you call it the Forest 2.0, it's Davy's modern take on the Forest, um, I won't go into too many details, but it's um, a knife that came up as a result of conversations between myself, Davey and Joe Price from the page. I think we all know Joe at this stage actually. But um, it basically combined everything that Davey's learned over the past 12 months since I've bought the original Forest. Um, I'll just show you the difference briefly. So similar, same length. Slightly different handle geometry. Mine's a more the original forest is a more coke bottle shape. This is tapered slightly, uh, slightly thinner as well. In just in the handles, the liners aren't as thick. Um, one noticeable difference between the two is thumb scallops versus no thumb scallops, and that came as a as a result of Bill Blust's beautiful forest knife with thumb scallops, which I have to say. Fair play bill, absolute revelation. Um, but Davy nailed it. And then there is one other difference which you may notice. Those trained in uh, knife, no, those who know their knives will, will notice straight away is uh, the bevel and the blade angle. On this, it's, uh, God, I don't know. I'll have to ask Davy and I, I'll be able to tell you. But um, it's a it's a great, it's a great shallow shouldered, a high shouldered, um, woods knife. 
it's great for carving and uh, yeah it's a standard industry standard this however is low shouldered and 12 12 and a half degrees and it is modeled on the horseman which has been a uh, fairly successful uh, it's had moderate success you know um no it's been a it's been a bloody seriously successful knife so far so it's it's modeled on on a, an edge geometry that has has proven now success so I have to say I've only had this a week I've had it out at two camps one camp and I've taken it out on walkabout with me as well and it's um it's a bloody wood grenade is the only way of describing it um I won't I won't ramble on about this because um like I said I want to uh, want to reserve as much as I can for a review where I'll talk about my thoughts on the, these two knives a year on from now, what they're like in terms of maintenance and how they've stood up, and then I'll uh, formally introduce you guys to this as well. But it's um, a beast, Davy nailed it again. Um, so that's the tools typically I carry. I suppose I'll move quickly on to my cup kit. There's not a whole lot to see. This is an old side pouch off a bag that I had before that I've just literally um, roughly chopped off. And my cup kit and my brew kit and stuff will go in here. So this is, uh, this is built up slowly over time. I'll just open her up. Um, so it's mainly composed of this which uh, will look familiar it's a nesting set that uh, wouldn't be out of place if you saw the Pathfinder sets they've, they've kind of nailed nesting sets and reason, the reason it isn't a Pathfinder set is because I wanted an alternative to the Pathfinder set uh, all my mates had one Joe had one, Colm had one, all the guys were using them and for good reason they're probably without a doubt if you're looking for a stainless steel set they're probably one of the best going um, so I wanted something that could do probably what the Pathfinder bottle and cup set can do but with a little bit more so I spent a while researching and trying to find stuff that would nest well together and that's the result. So this is the Nalgene backpacker, tapered, uh, if you'll notice, and it's one liter, uh, stainless steel, as you might have guessed. And it's um, yeah, it's a great, it's a great bottle. A little bit heavy, but that's stainless steel. That's what you're going to be prepared for. Um, inside it, I actually don't, I don't carry water in it, um, which might seem strange, but I don't, I, I keep, I have plastic bottles for that, so I don't carry water, what I keep is my coffees, and sugars, and teas, that sort of stuff, all go inside here, just to keep them all waterproof, close that down, no matter what the, the weather's like, even if it gets submerged, I have a, a bottle to boil water in, and guaranteed dry, teas, coffees, sugars, all in here. So typically I'll also put this, which is standard, I think, Tesco knife, fork, spoon scenario. Uh, yeah, that will normally go in there along with, along with this which is a ceramic knife that was kindly gifted to me by Joe over, yeah, over probably a year ago um, just because I hadn't got a knife for cooking when I was out for cutting meat or you know sausages, fish, whatever the hell I didn't want to be using my belt knife or my neck knife because well one they're probably going to be dirty and then they'll be dirty after I use them so I use this which is a uh, it's a Tim Home kitchenware. 
I have no idea where it's from or what it does or, or what the brand is but Joe gave it to me and it's a cracking knife, cut steak, beautiful, can't complain, weighs nothing. That goes in there. Um, so that will typically be full of coffees, teas, then my cutlery and that knife that all sits there. Next out, the Stanley Adventure Camp uh, cook pot. It's 800 mil capacity, I think. Yeah, well, it says 590 on the side is the highest point here. 591, I think. But um, yeah, it's about 800 mil. Um, it looks filthy inside, but it's not. That was just me and the lads acting the maggot at one of the camps. And uh, as you can see, a lot of my stuff is blued and burnished and anodized. It's because we basically um, threw all of our stainless steel equipment into a fire to try and get it anodized like Joe's one, because Joe accidentally left his in. It went white hot. When he pulled it out, it was beautiful and blue, and we all wanted beautiful and blue. So it's a testament, I suppose, to the state, to the steel it is, because um, they all went in the fire. They all come out white hot, and none of them lost their shape. None of them lost their functionality. And saying that, that one did get really, really badly stained. But I'll use this generally for cooking noodles, soups, that sort of stuff. It's a little bit inconvenient because it's quite deep. Um, but the handle on it is really good, steady. Doesn't heat up that much, which is kind of good. Um, yeah, comes with its lid. Not great, the fit, I have to say, in the lid. The one from the Pathfinder cup fits much better. So if you are getting one of these and you have a Pathfinder cup, there you go, for the win. Yeah, so that's what I'd use typically for cooking in, cooking food in. Uh, not frying obviously, but soups, noodles, that sort of stuff. And then finally, my coffee cup, my uh, cup of soup cup, whatever the hell really. It's uh, the Pathfinder stainless steel mug. Everybody knows one, someone who has one or has one themselves. It's, uh, you can't say anything about it. It's a cracking piece of kit. I avoided this like the plague having one of these for a long time because I really I was trying to be anti-trend. I didn't want to go down the Pathfinder route but there I went and I don't regret it. The only thing I don't like about this is those handles are muck because they get scalding hot with the cup as you can imagine and they flop around so even if you leave it standing they just sit into the body they heat up. You need a glove to lift it anyway, so in fairness the handles are kind of pointless. But, yeah, and that all nests down like that. The purpose of that is space, not weight. As you can tell, it's a full stainless steel cook set. Weight is not my primary goal. Bulk and size, pack size are. Um, yeah, so it weighs quite a bit. Uh, I'd say easily probably a kilo at least and um, no I wouldn't think so maybe yeah around a kilo I'd say but what else is in here um, microfiber towel uh, I use that for cleaning these as well as baby wipes baby wipes are actually um, really really good at cleaning stainless steel they'll take um, stuck on food and that sort of stuff oh, and tar and pine pitch and tear off the front of these so baby wipes really really good although you go through them like like there's nobody's business and then I don't know what else I've got in here random piece of cord I think for hanging the pot by the drain holes here as a bale handle I just would string up the cord string it good and high hang it out for laughing so yeah that's essentially what I carry as my go to tools and cook kit they haven't changed in a long time the cook kit kind of built up to um, cook it built up to where it is with the with the pathfinder cup which was bought about four months ago 
and ever since then I'm just I'm happy with it. There's no point I don't think in changing it. Um, it is heavy. I would continue. I would consider going down the road of of um, of stainless of titanium. But to be honest with you, Gary Doyle, I think on the page recently, he's a really good guy. Um, he has a YouTube channel as well, so check out check him out. Uh, Garcia Doyle, I believe. But um, Gary Doyle made a very good point about weight and what you carry. Um, the weight of what you're carrying makes no difference whatsoever. If you can carry it comfortably, then who cares? It doesn't need to be six kilos and you don't need to be going out carrying, you know, just your knife and uh, the clothes on your back. You know, if you want to carry 20 kilos and you're happy to carry it, do it. Who cares? However, um, me personally, I got tired of carrying heavy weights. Uh, and I had a bag at the time which was ludicrously uncomfortable which compelled me instead of doing the sensible thing and changing the bag I I started um, I started cutting kit really really quickly uh, so I started absolutely buttering what I carried with me and um, you'll see I, I, I'll show the kit overall I have a picture of on, on the community page you've probably seen it but I, I carry very little and the reason isn't because I want to be an ultra lighter, uh, or it's the reason isn't that I care about how much I carry. It's simply just um, convenience. I, I got into that habit when I had a ludicrously uncomfortable bag, and it's stayed that way since. I've changed the bag now, um, which I will do a, a video on, and it's, um, yeah, now it's really comfortable. It hovers around 11 to 10 to to 13 kilos depending on how much water and food I carry but um, yeah it doesn't matter it doesn't matter once the bag's comfortable and you're happy with it don't worry about it um, so yeah I'll try and get another one up uh, going through my sleep and shelter system in the next couple of days very very waffly video guys I apologise for that um, I didn't realise I was going to waffle on so long and I probably didn't cover a whole lot if you have any questions like I said don't forget to um Put a comment in at the bottom of the video or come over to the Facebook community page which we have. I'll put a link in the description if you're not already a member and come along and join us. Share some knowledge and questions. It's all good. It's all good, wholesome family fun. Uh, yeah, so thanks very much for watching. Peace!